Oren Davinsky. I'm an epilepsy specialist at NYU. I believe our usage of epilepsy surgery in non-lesional neocortical cases is underused. And that's because we don't think about all the costs that accrue to patients with ongoing treatment-resistant epilepsy. There is significantly increased risk of SUDEP, which can approach easily 6 to 9 percent per decade. And when you add other causes of epilepsy-related mortality, that may be 15 percent per decade. So think about a 25-year-old individual with treatment-resistant epilepsy with ongoing intermittent tonic-clonic seizures. Over the next three decades, their risk from dying from epilepsy may be 45 percent. Their risk of dying from an epilepsy surgery is probably 1 in 1,500. Keep in mind other morbidities of epilepsy. There's depression rates that go up to 50 percent in this treatment-resistant groups, psychosis up to 10 percent, anxiety disorders, progressive impairment in memory, and other problems. And what are the risks of invasive surgery? Well, just the diagnostic procedures are extremely safe. Yes, there's a risk of infection, a risk of bleeding, but in large series, the rates of permanent neuro neurological complications are actually very, very low. And the risk of death is at best 1 in 1,500 based on the data we have. Now, if you find something in a critical part of the brain, like a motor region or a language region, of course, in the vast majority of cases, we're not going to operate. But there are two things. We underutilize the evaluation and giving these patients the opportunity to see if they can benefit, and that includes not just seizure freedom, which may not be possible for many of these patients, but a palliation. If we could reduce their seizure burden by 50, 70, 80 percent over the next five decades of their life, it's a huge benefit. And when weighed against the risks, I believe it should be done.